So we've been talking about Joseph, and uh, one of the thoughts that comes to mind when I, when I think about Joseph is the fact that God hasn't called any of us to be fruitful. God has called us to be faithful. And as our, as our theme this year is growing together as we abide in Christ, uh, we realize that's true. For, for Jesus said, if you abide in me, in other words, if you are faithful to me, you will bear much fruit. Uh, the call wasn't to bear fruit. The call was to be faithful, and the byproduct of faithfulness is bearing fruit. We certainly see that in, in Joseph's life. Uh, we've, we've learned that uh, his first test that he faced, the pride test, he, he failed. But moving on from that, we will find that Joseph, um, Joseph found himself faithful in the test that we will find him taking over the next 15 or 20 years of his life. Um, and, and today we're going to talk about uh, the position test that, that Joseph faced because he went from the pit, a test that he, that he failed, uh, or, or at least at first he failed as he uh, fell into that pit, but then he called out on God. He was delivered from that, that pit. Uh, but now he finds himself in, in another pit of sorts, and that is the place of slavery or the position of slavery. Um, and this is a great story today that reminds us that no matter our position in life, whether we are a, a slave uh, or whether we are a great leader, the calling upon our life is the same, and it is to that of faithfulness. And jo Joseph models that very well for us. So we're going to start reading today in Genesis 39, beginning with verse 1. And I want you to notice uh, some key words in this, in this passage uh, that have to deal with Joseph's, the result of Joseph's faithfulness. Uh, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an Egyptian officer, uh, Pharaoh, uh, officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the bodyguard, brought him from the, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. And the Lord was with Joseph, so he became a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him, how the Lord had caused all that he did to prosper. So Joseph was successful. All that he did pr prospered. If you downloaded the notes uh, uh, for, this, for this lesson, you'll notice that those are underlined in, in your, in your uh, notes. So Joseph found favor uh, in, the, in his sight and became his personal servant. And he made him overseer of his house. And all that he owned, he put in his charge. It came about that from that time, he made him overseer in his house and over all the land he owned. For the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house on account of Joseph. Thus, the Lord's blessings was on all that he owned. So Joseph was successful. He was prospering in all he did. Uh, those who were around him were blessed uh, in, in the house and in the field. So he left everything he owned in Joseph's charge, and with him there he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. The chief jailer, now this is going down to verse 23 in that same passage. We find that in between these, these, two, these two texts that uh, Joseph was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. He was thrown in prison. So we will now find him, uh, we, we find him first in a position of slavery uh, where he was faithful. Then we find him still a servant of, of Potiphar, but yet faithful in that command. Now he is in the position of, of a prisoner. What would Joseph's response be uh, in, in the position of a, of a prisoner? You would think this is very unfair. He had been so faithful uh, in, his, in his task. Surely God would reward that somehow, and yet he finds himself in prison. But the chief jailer did not supervise anything under Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made to prosper. Now many of us, when we hear that word prosper, or when we hear the word prosperity, many times we tune out uh, to what a preacher might say. Because let's be honest, over the years, uh, televangelists have sort of hijacked that idea of prosperity. 
And so we may be turned off from it, from, from hearing these prosperity gospels, these name it and claim it type, type gospels that uh, really are not founded in Scripture at all. But I believe, according to, to Scripture, that God wants us to prosper no matter our position in life. And in, in, in fact, the key to improving our position in life is God's, is God's prosperity. Uh, well, let me, let me just turn your attention to what that word prosper means here, because I think that that is where, uh, that is where some of us maybe, uh, maybe are not informed and it allows our, it allows our thinking toward the subject of prosperity to be skewed. This Hebrew word, uh, prosperity actually is saleak. Saleak. And, and, and here's what it means literally in the, in the Hebrew to push forward, to push forward. Um, now let me, let me ask you this question. Would it just be okay with you in, in maybe the position you are in life right now uh, if God were to push you forward? Notice I'm not saying God's going to make you rich. God's going to give you everything you want. Some of you are stuck. And, and perhaps you're in a position that it feels like you take a step forward and two steps back, sort of like Joseph. He, he had risen up from being a slave to now in command of, of Potiphar's home, but now he's falsely accused and he's taken two steps back and in prison. And yet we see that still in prison that God is pushing him forward. I believe God wants to do that for all of us. So let me give you some keys to being faithful in your position that you might see that kind of prosperity or God pushing you forward in whatever state you're in. First of all, the key to prospering is the presence of the Lord. The key to prospering is the presence of the Lord. Over and over again, we see this in the life of Joseph, but not just Joseph, the life of David, the life of Hezekiah, many others, we find these words, and the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. Um, Hezekiah in Deuteronomy 29, carefully follow the terms of this covenant so that you may prosper in everything that you do. 2 Kings 18, speaking of Hezekiah, the Lord was with him and he prospered wherever he went. Um, you, want to, you want to prosper? You want the Lord to push you forward? You have to spend time in His presence because when you spend time in His presence, His presence will follow you everywhere you go. His presence will be with you wherever you go. Why is that significant? Uh, Psalm 1611 says, In His presence there is fullness of joy. And Nehemiah 8.10 10 reminds us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Why could Joseph have a countenance that was uplifting during these times? Because he'd been in the presence of the Lord, and in the presence of the Lord he had gotten God's joy. And when you have God's joy, uh, it becomes your strength that allows you not to be controlled or not to be, uh, your emotions not to be dominated by your position, but you stay steadfast. You stay steadfast in your faith in God even when your circumstances or your position are unfavorable. The key to prospering or the key to God pushing us forward is the presence of the Lord. And the Lord was with Joseph. Secondly, the key to the presence of the Lord is obedience. The key to the presence of the Lord is obedience. Now this might not make sense to you, so let me read a, let me read a few scriptures to you. 2 Chronicles 17 verses 3 and 4. Now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. There we find it again. Jehoshaphat had the presence of the Lord upon him. Why? Because he walked in the, form, in the former ways of his father David. He did not seek the bells. In other words, he was obedient to the Lord. He sought, God, he sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments, not according to the acts of Israel. 1 Samuel 18, 12, And David behaved wisely in all his ways. In other words, he obeyed. And the Lord was with him. Deuteronomy 11.26, Behold, I set before you today blessings and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. 
but turn aside from the way which you which I command you today to not go after the God you have known have known. And in Job 36 11, he says, if they obey and serve him, if they are obedient, they shall spend their days in prosperity. You want the presence of the Lord in your life? Be obedient to what His Word has, has said to you. It's amazing to me how many people want God to bless their decisions, and yet God has already spoke about their decisions, and they are unwilling to walk in obedience to His Word. Walk in obedience, and you will find His presence. You live in His presence, and He will push you forward in any circumstance you are in. Third, the key to obedience is faith. The key to obedience is faith. Do you know why a farmer plants seed in the ground? It's very simple. Because he knows that that seed is going to bring a harvest. Now, Hebrews 11 says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. A far, just as a farmer knows that based on the laws of nature, they have an assurance that when that seed is put in the ground, it's going to bring forth a harvest. We have the assurance that when we place our faith in God, when we are obedient to Him, He is always, always faithful to His Word. The truth is that some of us have more, more faith in something like our hot water heater than we do God. We go to get in the shower and we'll turn that hot water on. It'll be cold when it starts, but we sit there and we put our hand on it and put our hand on it and we just sit there because we know that in a, in a moment that water is gonna, gonna turn hot. Um, and so we'll give it 10, 15, 20 seconds until that water warms up. But we know it's, we know it's gonna happen, so we stand there and wait. How many times do we with God uh, ask God for something, and we grow so impatient uh, that, that before God even has an opportunity to respond, we've done moved on to trying to solve our problems in our own means uh, because we don't have faith that God truly is who He, who he says He is. Now, when we were in, in Nashville, I, I pastored a very multicultural church, and we had a lot of Nigerian families that were, that were in our church. And um, one of the matriarchs of, of one of our Nigerian families, and for that part, the, uh, the, the Nigerian community, she was, she was a matriarch of the entire Nigerian community in Nashville. Um, we called her mama. Everybody called her mama. And she was about 75, 80 years old, and, and mama was a, just a, a godly woman, but also a very no-nonsense woman. And one day I was at their house and there was another visiting family there that had a kid that was very, very unruly acting. Now when I say unruly, this kid was just, uh, they were in hyper mode from the very beginning. They were running around, tearing up things, uh, making messes, and would just leave it behind. And, and it just very, very unruly and very disrespectful. And I was sitting there with Mama and the parents of this couple, along with several others. And uh, Mama looked up at the at the mother and father of this of this kid, and said, "If you don't spank that kid, I will." And the parents, just sort of shocked, looked at Mama and said, "Okay." In the Nigerian community, very different than most American households. Um, uh, they, they don't play around when it comes to discipline. And uh, if your kids are at, at someone else's house, it's just pretty much a given that that person has the right to discipline your kids. Well, this parent, these parents weren't disciplining this child. But mama, mama made it clear that she would. Well, about that time, this kid came over and was, was close to where mama was sitting and started. There was a big plant there in the room with these, I think it's an elephant ear plant. This kid just started picking the leaves off of this plant. Well, as it turns out, to pick the leaves off the plant, the kid had to bend down a little bit. And as that kid bent down, Mama tore into that kid's backside with a spanking that that kid would never forget. 
At first, the kid just turned around in utter amazement. I don't think his parents had ever spanked him before. Then he started crying. Um, went over to his mama, climbed in his mama's lap. Well, about an hour later, that kid came back through the house playing with the other kids, and he walked over to that plant, and he shook his finger at that plant and said, Mama, spank you. Mama, spank you. Uh, you see, when a kid believes, they'll obey. When, when a kid believes, uh, they'll obey. Right? And that's just not in discipline. That's also in reward. When a kid knows they're going to be rewarded, they'll, they'll have good behavior. When a kid knows that they're going to be rewarded with uh, discipline, uh, and they know that that is not just an empty threat, but it is a reality, they'll obey. That kid wouldn't do anything that mama said not to do again. The same is true for us in the Word of God. If we truly have faith that God is who He said He is, and that His Word is the true authoritative Word of God, we'll obey it. We'll obey it. We will put our faith there in response to believing that God's Word is true for our life. And when we do that, when we, when we uh, obey, when we have faith, we obey. And when we obey, we will prosper or we will see God push us, push us forward. Now you say, well, that's great, but what is the key to, to faith? Well, the key to faith is, is very, very simple. In fact, Hebrews, or excuse me, Romans 10 tells us what the key to having faith is. Verse 17, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God has the power to change your life. The Word of God has the power to change your circumstances. Now, it doesn't mean that always that our position in life will change just because we believe in the Word of God or we have faith in the Word of God. But what it does mean is perhaps our attitude and, and our blessing in our position will improve when our, when our faith is in the Lord. What, is, what does the Bible say? Heaven and earth will pass away, but His Word will stand forever. My Word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. So if we'll get the Word in our heart, notice He didn't say faith comes by doing the Word. Faith comes by hearing the Word. Get it in your heart. Get God's Word in your heart. And if you will get, if you will get His Word in your heart, you will develop a... Uh, you will learn to be obedient to, to that Word. And as you are obedient to that Word, you will find God pushing you forward just as He did Joseph in every position you find yourself in life. Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you for all those who watch today. I just ask you, Lord, uh, to help us. Whatever our position is in this life, Lord, help us to be faithful unto you. To remember that you didn't call us to be fruitful. You called us to be faithful. And God, sometimes we grow so discouraged when our position isn't the one we would like. But God, let us stay faithful. Let us remember, Lord, that we can only do this if Your presence is with us. But Lord, if we, will, if we will spend time in Your presence, You will prosper us. You will push us forward. If we will believe in Your Word, if we will get Your Word in our heart and obey Your Word, uh, Lord, you will, you will push us forward in our circumstances and in our position. And we thank You for doing this in Your strong name. Amen.